Melias was perhaps the first to realize that cinema offered a practical way in which time and space could be manipulated through tricks. And another marvel, he realized that color made it possible to dream in color. And from the beginning, Georges Méliès had had his films tinted by Madame Tuilier, who had done the tinting of magic lantern plates. She had a team of girls who tinted for several companies, such as Pâté. Every girl used a fine sable hair brush like this one to apply the colors. Here I'm tinting with a yellow shade, aniline dye dating from the last century, oramine. All we know about hand coloring is generally vague and uh, technical details are rare. The easiest way to understand a technique is to try it. And that's what I've done on one of Méliès's acetate prints of 1901, the chrysalis and the butterfly. It's uh, 40 meters long with 2,000 picture frames that I tinted one after the other. And that helped me to understand exactly how colorists worked then. Now I'm applying oramine to get a yellow background. A common practice at the time for flames, for example, was to mix the colors on the film. For example, for a red flame in the center, they applied magenta, which was another aniline dye they called fuxine. And this becomes red on the yellow background. And when it's screened, it moves in a very interesting way. A tinted Melies film is also recognizable by its style and colors, which were placed according to very original standards. The film used in Melies's times was not very sensitive to reds and yellows, which became dark and opaque on the screen. As for blues, they came out completely white. To get translucid pictures capable of supporting tinting, I painted my sets in greys, using all intermediate shades of grey, from black to pure white. This made the sets look like strange funereal ornaments. <laughs> 